So after talking about friction, or where we're gonna say about the friction coefficient things uh, in the previous few videos, now we're gonna talk about the types of wear, or right, the wearing process. So we'll first talk about types of wear, then later on we'll talk about certain stuff on the wear testing, which is very important. So first of all, we just need to understand what is the type of wear first, and the meaning of wear. Alright, so um, there is a few types of wear. Alright, the first type is the adhesive wear, second is the abrasive wear, third is the fatigue wear. Alright, and the last one is the erosive wear. Okay, I don't know whether it's any other wear. Now, there, there is still another one, corrosion wear. So there is in total five of the, the wearing thing. Okay, so let's start with the, the definitions of wearing is that it is the progressive removal of material from the surface. Alright, so you have this particular surface. Alright, so you can actually move. So as w for example, if it's erosion, for example, erosion where, erosion. Alright, it the when the when the wind starts to blow, when the wind starts to blow, this surface over here will start to be lesser and lesser. So instead of this this uh squarish shape, you will have something like that. And this is called this is a form of wear and it's an erosion wear. So this is one type, okay. But I just briefly give you the example of that uh, meaning of the progressive. Or right? it takes time to, to to wear off the material or wear off the surface, I should say. Okay, so let's talk about the adhesive, the first one. All right. So adhesive itself, uh, kind of give you the the perception that it may be adhesive between them between two materials. No, it's not. Okay, it is adhesive is because, for example you will have a, a, a hard material alright this light blue color is the hard material over here this is the softer material okay so when you when you start to put the hard and the soft material together alright the asparagus will touch each other right as the, the thing shows and you as you know in the previous few videos I don't know when alright we talked about the micro welts alright the micro welts itself uh, due to certain friction alright or certain contact point that will cause welding, all right. And this micro welds itself, if you have a certain force, all right. This so this is the part particular thing. So this force, when it's being applied, all right. So this this part is the hard material. This this part is the soft material. So when when they contact in at the particular this this particular point, all right. When the force is being applied, or when the force is being applied, for example, if I were to apply the force now, the the hard material. This hard material over here will kind of pull off the softer material together with it. All right. So in other words, the softer material adhere to the hard material. All right. And this is why we call it the adhesive wear, because the softer material adhere or stick to the hard material. Okay. So this is the meaning behind why it's called the adhesive wear. All right. And say more properly all right is that the adhesive bond okay it's not the hard material it's just that the hard material all right this point over here maybe i should the hard material stick this or the soft and the hard material stick together so 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 how do i say so closely or they are bonded so powerfully that if the adhesive bonds between the hard and the soft material is so strong that then the base materials then you're gonna start to pull off the the part of the soft material away. That's just the meaning. So the micro weld itself, I don't know where am I. I actually paused the video for quite a while. And anyway, so it's just the meaning that the um the adhesive bond between the hard and the soft material. If the adhesive bond between the hard and the soft material is stronger than the soft material, then you will actually rip off apart the soft material. Okay, and this is why this picture over here uh, shows it very clearly, which is very good. Yeah, and therefore uh, that part, that particular part, or this particular part is called the, uh, becomes the loose wear particles. So it can be very, it, it, it's kind of sticking onto it, but it's not very, um, very accurate, I think. So it's a bit loose and it may drop off, I think. I don't know. So it become, it may become a debris. Alright, nonetheless, yeah. So um take note of the 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 actual wear law, alright, where this is the volume of the materials removed by the wear V, alright, where the rest I think you know what is going about. 
so maybe I should um, explain a bit about the meaning I don't know I just want to take let you take note that the the longer the length of travel all right and the heavier or normal load so this is the surface this is the normal load W so along along the way if you have certain the wearing so you you, you kind of wear go along this thing or right, I don't know whether is this friction or is this called wear that's the another thing <laughs> but anyway uh, the, the, the longer the length of travel and the higher the weight all right then you actually cause the volume of materials removed by the wear to increase so you want to actually uh, cut short of these things while the indentation of the hardness of the soft material all right um, so called uh, restricts the amount of volume so I think the indentation hardness is the hardness bri brittle hardness brittle value of the material all right so if the soft material is very hard all right then the amount of volume being wear off is lesser all right because because if this is very hard all right for example example on because although this is soft but for although it's soft softer than this thing but if it's it is still hard relatively to the, the adhesive bond between the hard and this soft one then it is still able to to take it all right so this over here the bond between the hard and the soft material all right is called the adhesive bond so if this adhesive bond is is weaker than this thing then uh, you will not peel off this part you the, the, the this part will still stay here if however if the ad adhesive bond over here is larger than this one larger than the the hardness of this soft material then you're going to peel it off okay so if you don't understand you repeat uh, you just click back a few minutes ago and then you rewatch again Right, hopefully it's clear just that adhesive bond over here must if it's larger than the hardness of this thing you're gonna peel off the soft material if the adhesive bond is lesser then you will not peel off the soft material that's just the meaning of that okay so this is why it talks about the amount of volume being removed or based on this equation and the definitions so this is a very important equation that you may want to understand and also to take note, I don't know whether you need to memorize, so give me a while. There's nothing saying that you need to memorize, but I, in case you have time, then you, do, you just go and memorize also. It's quite straightforward la, actually. So nonetheless, I may be wrong for my indentation of hardness of the soft materials. I don't know whether is this the hardness Bruno values or not. Or I'll leave you to think about it in the future, I'll update. Okay. Alright, so this is just a quick review of the adhesive wear. Now let's talk about the abrasive wear. Abrasive wear is uh, you have a piece of debris over here, okay. So a hard foreign metal debris or dust or whatever, all right, that the work environments abrade the rubbing surfaces of both materials unintentionally. So it's an unintentional stuff, okay. So yeah, I think you know what I mean. So it's stuck between them. So when you rub against each other, so there will be a force going in this direction and a force going in this direction. So therefore, um, in between them, they will cause this type of thing that is happening, this hard particle, alright. So therefore, um, how do you prevent the abrasive wear? You need to talk about these things, alright. Avoid using similar materials to prevent solubility, alright. So, solubility means what? So I don't know why is there a, a portion where it's talked about solubility. So I would believe it's due to maybe the, the micro welts also. Alright, because the micro welts, if you think about it, over here, so over here, it, because of the materials, this material and this material are the same, alright, for example, all right, or not, normally this is hard, this is soft, but if, for example, if they are the same material, okay, then since they are melting each other, they, when you start to poof, like, you know, go in these two directions, alright, so for example, this is the thing, they, they are touching each other, so when you apply a force and this force over here, Alright, this thing over here may may move. Alright, maybe I should draw properly. Alright, so this thing over here may move. Or this thing over here may actually move. So therefore in between this this piece over here becomes the debris. Alright. And therefore um I would believe it's this type of thing that is happening. Alright. And um yeah. Lo, so use a hard materials definitely. And I think yeah. So for for thick wear uh, it's just cyclic loading, all right. Repeated. I think you no need to explain this. All right. Between surface, when you form surface and subsurface cracks, 
So let's click the link and see what it goes. When I click the link, it comes comes back to here. You see, when I click this, it goes to different page 22, 28. All right. So when I click back, it comes back to here. So when I talk about cyclic loading, there is three types. Of, uh, there are three types again. The first one is the tension compression type. All right. When you pull and compress it at the same time, I think so. You you kind of like you know load. This is one of a cyclic loading. The other one is tension tension loading. All right and uh, a certain loading that is very confusing it's a, it's a mixture of random stuff so this is why this this is the type of loading also so you need to know this type, these three types so uh, for for thinkware it's very similar to cyclic contact loading all right so i repeat again uh, for for thinkware all right it's very similar to the cyclic contact loading all right and i don't need to explain this thing all right and <coughs> The low contact load, all right, is the contact between the the load and the surface. That's all. This is the load W. This is the maybe your floor, all right. So low con low contact load or, or over here will reduce the amount of fatigue wear. That's just the meaning. In case you may wonder, all right, mm. and avoid thermal fatigue. Thermal fatigue itself is heating. So you constantly heat it up, you may cause a lot of welding, all right, micro welds also. So the micro valves where you when you so called uh, move up and down, move up and down, there will be more debris coming out. Alright, and you can actually deteriorate the material also. Alright, that's something for you to know la. Okay. And then next is the corrosion where alright, uh is when two surfaces are contact in under a corrosive environment, alright, oxidation and some chemical reactions occur. Alright, due to the anode and cathode type of thing. Okay, so one piece is cathode, one piece is anode, and therefore, uh, if that's the case, because the water is a conducting thing, so when the water comes in, all right, it starts to go in, and uh, goes in the electrical circuit. So this is why it's an electromechanical reaction, and this is why it caused the corrosion to happen. In case you may forgot or whatever, all right. So um, you may also need to explain, all right, and understood the the type of thing. Okay, for good design, selection of su suitable materials, you need to know. Yeah, let's say for for this type of bridge, all right. What are the normal uh, thing? Why do you choose composite over metal? Because composite is less resistance to corrosion. Metal is very easy to corrode, and then uh, if you use metal, you need to apply surface treat surface treatment and everything. All right. Moreover, metal is heavy, you know, type of thing. So composite is lighter, but maybe you should say some bad things about composite also, like uh some micro cracks you cannot see properly so hard to maintain you know type of thing so you need to compare here and then between them okay so this is the corrosion wear type of thing for the last part is the erosive wear or i take note of the word uh gas or liquid strike a surface with velocity okay so it's of uh, with a certain velocity and therefore this picture over here let's see how it goes I think it's an experiment. I don't know whether is it like this, alright, I'd be wrong, is that when this thing plunges in, alright, the air itself coming in from here, alright, is being forced with a certain velocity. So this air itself, boom, alright, and therefore created this type of breakage. Alright, so I don't know whether is it this thing and then boom, 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 and therefore it causes the erosion. Because the air, alright, as the time goes by, the the air itself is gonna go in this surface, or right, it's going to flow in this manner, correct? Because due to the airflow, right? The how the airflow will move. So as time goes by, the airflow will actually uh, smoothen this part, or right, and causes uh, this part to actually uh, break, break off. And this is some form of a more uh, elaborated approach on erosive wear instead of the the you know if you have this type of material and then some the wind blow the wind blow across here so normally you wear this part away you know so in a more detailed way in a more experimental way i think this is more better explanation <laughs> i keep burping and uh, it is governed by u strength and young models of the surface material okay so the surface material i believe is this surface this particular surface okay so it's a young model of this surface. Uh, so for ductile material and a brittle material, all right, the angle of this uh, attack, all right, because you're gonna hit, 
you're gonna hit onto this thing alright there'll be a certain angle right if you were to go into like this type of thing alright so if this is the the datum point this is the angle so this angle theta okay is approximately the same for brittle and duttle is about this 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 cross-sectional point alright so I think is since this is 30 this is 60 then this should be in between 45 yeah so maybe this is about 40 like that about 40 degrees I don't know so uh, you may want to also draw this graph I don't know whether he did I don't think he said this but I think you can draw this graph in case they, they ask la. rate of corrosive wear against the angle okay so you need to know the angle of attack also alright just to, to take note of the, the different stuff so you may want to also read it up for the uh, reading materials alright so these are all the reading materials uh, you should go and read it up yourself there's the same thing uh, that we have said earlier maybe you can maybe I should take a while and read you give me a while so over here am I recording? you give me a while yeah I'm I think uh, yeah, I'm recording so low impact angles alright remove metal by plastic flow so I think it's, it's talking about the yielding of the plastic alright so it's a plastic flow so the the rate of erosive wear so it's amount of uh, erosive uh, how many times you erode the the material alright so how many times you erode the material so this is the amount of amount of erosion per time or whatever thing uh, I don't know so it's, it's for you to think about it and then corrosion so the corrosion is that talking about the reaction products right we say that there will be a maybe this is the cathode this is the anode and the water is the conductive thing so once you have this thing you can cause electrical chemical electrochemical reaction all right and therefore if the surface then rub against each other all right then they, they rub each other all right then it may actually cause the the, the, the things to actually remove the surface of the, the thing to their surfaces to be removed all right so slowly slowly you will actually wear off the surface also so this is not very uh, explicitly defined just now so I want to define all the rest is the same as what we are saying but take note of the considerations design considerations or what what can you do to to prevent all these things to happen or what can you do also over here I adhesive where you can also you can suggest that you use a hard material okay or nonetheless you can also if you think about it uh, your 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 ashas Ashka or don't know what the hell going on. Ach I don't know man. Yeah, Achet well or so if you want to reduce the amount of volume being uh, removed, alright, lower your length of travel, lower your load, alright? And take note of the coefficient. Lower the better also. Alright. And the amount of uh amount the hardness of the, the material also. Okay. So I think these are the things so far so good. Alright. So next we will talk about the wear testing. So currently we talk about all types of wearing. So we uh, next video we'll talk about how to test the wearing. Alright. Then things should be fine already. I right, see you there.